sound person, not a... Not it's a... okay. Oké, okay, welkom in... Hoe is dat? Oké. Okay. Everybody in? Yes. Uh, I'd like to present the special presentation of Sherry Delis from Australia. The setup is uh, in a kind of uh, schedule. We have a um, presentation of about one hour first. Then we split up in discussions groups, the same groups as uh, we used to be today. Share explain later of in the first hour um, what are, uh, what are you doing uh, what she ex expect in the discussion you have the time for 10 minutes in a discussion so it is a kind of homework I said 15 <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, then you come back and uh, the, the question of the, the question from Sherry is on the groups leaders to make to, to give Sherry a report of the discussion in the groups Surprise. about so is yeah, it yeah, clear? Yeah, yeah it's clear. Okay. <laughs> so Sherry something forgotten? No. Okay. Do you want me to get started? It's you. Sorry. <coughs> Yes, I consulted uh, Edwin about uh, whether we should do these groups and we decided no and so I've ignored that advice and then I consulted Lubo about, uh, Lubo told me that I shouldn't rehearse this at all and so then I rehearsed like crazy so uh, <laughs> here we are. Um, the first thing I'd like to say is if I speak too quickly at any stage, please tell me because I have a tendency to speak rather rapidly in at the best of times and I gather that some people have actually asked for nice calm speaking so please stop me over and over if I if I move too quickly I'll be showing a few videos and that's Australians talking in their colloquial English so I, I hope that's fine too um, <clears throat> first to introduce myself my name is Sherry Delise and um, I'm a feature maker but and, and I've worked um, for the lovely program, The Listening Room, that some of you will well remember, a very, very respected program. I was very lucky to work on that with some colleagues that I think uh, some of you will know well. And I've also worked at WNYC in New York City. And I've worked uh, with, with some colleagues here, particularly I'm thinking Edwin, Hari, a couple of other people, had some lovely discussions with you over the time. But I've been away from feature making for five or six years. Not, not really by choice, I must say. Our, our listening room was um, you know, discontinued by the ABC management, and so I found I no longer um, had work. And really, this project that I'm going to show you was my response to that. It was, uh, in a way, what do you do when your uh, whole identity is tied up in being a feature maker, and then suddenly you know, you're not uh, a feature maker anymore? And it often produces interesting results. I'm happy to say, though, that I've just, uh, from July 1, I'm returning to feature making at ABC. A, a job vacancy came up, and so I have it. I'm very excited by that. So the reason I mention all that is to just to give a little bit of context to where this project is coming from, but also just to say I'm just enormously pleased to be here for so many reasons. To be back amongst colleagues and hearing all these features is just like coming home to me. And also, it's a little bit uh, combining the two worlds that I've, that I've been inhabiting for a while. So it's just a, a great privilege. So what I'm going to be doing is talking about a project called ABC Pool trying to describe what that project is. I thought two hours is a hell of a long time, so I've brought a few friends along in the PowerPoint. They're going to talk to you about what they think Pool is. Uh, Pool's a very collaborative project, so that makes a lot of sense. <clears throat> and then, as Willem said, what I'd love to do is to get a little bit creative with it and to split into groups. I haven't told any of the group leaders this yet, so thank you for uh, your cooperation. <laughs> but we'd like to go into groups and just discuss whether there's a project you could imagine uh, to happen on Pool. And then we'll come back and, and talk about those, and then, and then we're free. 
Um, but if any of those projects come to fruition, um, or if you'd like them to, or if you have an idea, I'd just like to say at the beginning, and then I'll say again at the end, I'm very interested in people using this tool. You don't have to be from Australia to use this tool. This is a tool that anyone can use anywhere in the world. And also I'm interested in collaborating, so if anyone would like to talk to me about a collaboration we might do using this tool, um, a co-production or, or, or anything, it could be in any language too, then, then let me know. How's that speed? Speed of, yeah? Okay. So the first question, what is pool? Um, pool is a social media website, a social media project put on, hosted by the Australian Broadcasting Corporation where I work. Um, and it is a place where people share media and collaborate on projects. And that's the really important two things. They share media, collaborate on projects. It's also, you might say, um, a place that breaks down the boundaries between the audience or the former audience, as they're often called, and the ABC or producers like yourself. It, it allows them to co-create together. The core principles of pool are participation and co-creation or collaboration. And a, a simple way to talk about what pool is, it's a place where you can share and talk about images, sounds, documentaries, animations, any kind of media you can imagine. Um, as they do in the digital world, we often have keywords because we're doing meta tagging. I thought I'd just throw up some keywords there. This is the kind of some of the kinds of ideas that are encapsulated in this project. Um, I give a number of presentations on pool, and um, each one of these could be a different kind of presentation. But I'm going to be focusing around um, this one: co-creation and collaboration, these two words, because that's what I thought you might be interested in, ways you could use this to collaborate or co-create with your audience. But each one of these words, in a way, could be its own uh, presentation. And uh, it's also another reason that I'm really glad to be here, because often I'm used to presenting in these worlds where it's a sort of digital, digital utopianism going on, as you might be aware at the moment. And so um, people you know, are very excited about these projects, and so you get a lot of you know, rah, rah, rah. But I, I expect you might be a more critical audience, and that will be really good and interesting for me, <laughs> as long as you're nice. <laughs> Um, so I'll just say that um, <coughs> Pool started in 2003, let's, let's call it 2004, which was when I lost my job at the listening room. I'd actually, actually already proposed this project, but I didn't know it would grow into such a massive thing. Um, but I'd proposed it before the listening room fell, but when the listening room uh, went off the agenda, the ABC basically didn't really know what to do with me, but they were rather stuck with me. And so they were seeking for me to be a journalist, and I'm not really a journalist, don't have those skills, didn't particularly have that interest. I ended up in some strange positions for a while, and I thought pretty quickly, I better make my own place. So uh, part of the motivation for this was uh, to you know, just create this project to, to have a home for myself. But also uh, the project, when it initially uh, started in my mind, when I was still at the listening room, was all about how do we create a space where people can publish on the ABC without the gatekeepers. Um, because I was having some trouble getting young people's work into the ABC in various ways. And um, I thought, well, okay, they need to prove themselves. Maybe we can't commission them yet. Maybe they're not ready for commissioning. But if we could have a space where they could just publish their work, that would be an interim step. Um, 2003 was a little bit early for the ABC to understand something like pool. You know, these institutions, very slow. They move very slowly. Um, but by, I'll just stay there for a sec, but by 2006, um, and I'd been putting the proposal up over and over and, and doing odd jobs in the meantime, social media started to be on the rise and things like MySpace came along. So the ABC, I remember when I rewrote the proposal for the seventh time, I said, oh, there's this thing called MySpace and look, Rupert Murdoch just bought it, so the media's interested in this area. And uh, about that time, I think the ABC management could start to see it, which was great. Um, so they allowed me 
to do a little uh, skunk works project. I don't know if you know what a skunk works project is. It's it's a it's a little a small group that's allowed to operate in a larger institution with a lot of autonomy. And I think I had that autonomy partly because they didn't know what it was. You know that kind of situation. Nobody really understands what you're doing. So it was great. It meant we got to do some very radical things, really, um, that I think were quite ahead of their time. Possibly still are. N not saying that as a brag. It's just that um, it's hard within an institution uh, to get up some of the things that we have and I think we only did because uh, we're flying under the radar a little bit. Um, around 2006 too, um, as, as you well know, the internet became such a strong force. Uh, web 2.0, this idea that people can work together on the web, that's what really Web 2.0 means. And so uh, you started having theorists, you know, this is from one of our university professors, um, talking about the way the internet is changing the idea of innovation. So uh, Terry Cutler's saying, you know, in the age of the internet, um, innovation is really characterized by collaboration and an ability to understand how to collaborate and to connect. And so that knowledge is flowing all around the system. And I'll come back to uh, the licensing system that allows that to happen a little bit. Um, again, this idea of, by another media academic. Yeah, it's a hideous word and I'm almost embarrassed to put it. I almost deleted that slide. But it, as bad as it is, it's kind of useful. You know, um, so you know how academics, they need to find, uh, they colonize areas by finding a name for it. They plant their flag. So Axel Bruns, a uh, German guy who lives in Sydney, uh, coined this term producage. So it's a mix of production and usage. And the idea is that now that we, um, now that people have these cheap tools and that they can make their own work, and that we're working on the internet where everything's, uh, you know, flowing around, think of remix culture and so on, then you're starting to see a breakdown between producing and consuming. People are doing both. So these ideas, they didn't inform pool; they just came along at the same time. It's a, it's a world where everything's starting to grow in those kind of ways. Um, oh yeah, it won't get there yet. So, so in 2006, uh, we set up this uh, project, as I said, but the one problem was we didn't have any money for a website. They didn't give any money. Um, but that lack of money made us more creative, I think, and so we basically started building a beta website, a little uh, practice website, if you like, and it was all basically done by volunteers. Some university researchers, I put together a, a team of uh, new media researchers who acted as a kind of advisory board, and then uh, we had just anybody who would help build the website would, had a, an army of interns helping to build this. Very unskilled, a lot of the people, like we, I had a, a girl who, um, she was studying interior design. She became our information architect for the website. It was all a bit like that, it was lovely. Um, and that really went along with the open source philosophy that, that really informed Pool. Um, in 2009, we had our big breakthrough. So there's something called the Australian Federal Government 2.0 Task Force. And um, they gave Pool this prize, the Government Task Force, Government 2.0 Innovator Award that we won in 2009 which was really fantastic and very surprising. I only found out about it by accident. I was just looking around the internet at some point and I saw the task force had formed and I watched the launch video um, and he, he mentioned three projects in Australia and he mentioned pool. I, I, again, I'm not saying it to brag. It's just that at the time, it was just like we were operating in a little broom closet. We still are, really. And it wasn't recognized, as Nicole knows. Nicole's nodding, you know. Had no recognition within the corporation. So, you know, to come across a website where somebody from the government's talking about it and saying, ABC's done this great thing. So I immediately ran to my managers and said, okay, now, now, now can we have a website? And so we got a website, um, got some money to fund it. Um, so. I collaborated to build this website with a group, a university group. So I've done a lot of this work with university researchers um, who are interested in this area of creative industries or new digital uh, research, new digital technology, um, and how it's affecting culture. So there's a group called the Australasian Centre for Interaction Design, and they have a very interesting way of designing a website, which was very much in keeping with this collaborative idea. And I'll just show you a little bit how they did that. Um, so they 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 interviewed along along with us we worked together interviewed all of our beta members so by that stage we had about a thousand people working on this crappy little website Nicole's <laughs> thank you Nicole was one of those and she um, 
she would be able to tell you how difficult it was to work on that initial website. But we had some very dedicated people who wanted to use it. <laughs> I'm slowing down. Um, <laughs> And so, yes, so we worked with those, say, 1,000 people, gave them all a questionnaire, asked them about how they were using Pool, what they wanted to do with it, and so on. We also uh, watched some people using Pool. We also had some workshops. Uh, we invited particular, only about 15 stakeholders, we called them in, some from ABC management, but also people who are using the website. And from that, we really came to understand what people were doing with that space and what they wanted to do with that space, because we always wanted it to grow from the bottom up. Um, so this, uh, these are all quotes. We had a little room called the pool room, and uh, along in all those interviews, we were collecting quotes. And so this is the designers putting all these quotes on their yellow tabs on the wall. And from those, they start looking for patterns. Here's a close-up of one. So they had many quotes like this. Um, and one thing that they found was that people had basically four motivations. They wanted to produce something. They wanted to gather interesting material. <clears throat> they wanted to belong to a media community. And they wanted to be part of the ABC. There were many sub-motivations, but those were the four overarching categories. <clears throat> this was an interesting tool that the designers introduced. Um, it's a bit hard to read. I wouldn't expect you to really understand it, but it's, it's kind of pretty, and I thought I could show you. So all these, all these green boxes are things that people wanted to do. So take this one, which is in the larger category of belong to a media community. Here, I can't actually read them, but if you wanted to be part of a media community, you might want to be able to communicate with people in the group. I'm going to pretend that that's what that says. You might want to be able to be notified if somebody comments on something you've done, and so on. So each of those is a thing that people nominated that they would like to do on pool. Down here, the blue is where we were our old beta website was allowing that possibility. So you can see sometimes we were doing quite well. We were giving them what they wanted. But sometimes we were giving them absolutely nothing of what they wanted. That's where the blue is lacking. Do people basically understand that idea, what that diagram is doing? So from that, we uh, developed what functionality the website needed to have. Then these personas were developed. Um, each of these people, and there were more, represents either a person who was already working on pool or a, an amalgamation of different people. So for example, if I, if I remember correctly, Ruth is an ABC producer who wants to collaborate with audiences. Astrid is a young student who wants a place to make a portfolio for her work and wants to bridge the world of the student and the professional. Molly, uh, I think she was like a film producer who wants to no, let's see, Molly is more like, um, yeah, Molly is a person who loves to tell stories and she believes in the power of storytelling. She's not a professional, but she wants a place to put her stories. She wants to be able to see other people's stories. And Sam, uh, he's like an or organizer. He has causes that he's interested in and he likes to organize people around those issues. Um, so why they developed these personas is that once we got the functionality decided upon, we knew what we wanted the site to do, then they would sit and say, these designers, um, okay, if Ruth wanted to do a project, would she be able to do it with this? And they would run scenarios. They would come up with scenarios and see if each of these people could achieve what they wanted. So I'm saying all that just to say that, you know, incredibly participatory design process. I was extremely impressed uh, to be part of it. It was just wonderful. Um, then they ended up with design proposals. That's the proposals for the home page. Um, I'll show you the site in just a moment a project page because people did want to work together. And so let me just show you the site at this point now to find it. Take you on a very quick tour. This is the actual pool site. Um, so you, you can see, um, let me just, 
So where people share media and collaborate on projects. So that basically came out of the research. That's what people wanted to do on the site. Um, on this site, it looks a bit messy at the moment. The team have just put all this up overnight. Um, this, this is a space that's constantly changing. So um, I'm just noticing some of the projects they've put up look a little bit messy and hard to read. But um, So these are features here on the home page. So one of the functions of our very small team is to look at what's going on in the site and bring it to the surface in a way, you know, because it's like the internet itself. There's so much there. How do you, how do you know what's the good stuff? And we want to model the good stuff, so we feature things. So, for example, that's there's a little education going on. There's a featured person. We always feature somebody who's doing interesting things in the pool. Um, we always feature a project, and you'll hear a little bit more about that project later. Um, that's one, and there's another, there's a piece of media. So we're usually featuring a piece of media, a project, a person, and we might be doing some educating, which is we're just trying to show people who does what at pool. So again, always trying to be very transparent. Um, <clears throat> We have a media page, and again, on the media page, you can look at just pieces of media. So this is just an organization. Did that work, actually? It didn't seem to. Did we go there? Oh, yeah, we've gone. Um, so... Um, we have one piece of featured media in the center, and then over here, um, others. So Solar Sea, I saw that just came up last night. That's uh, just something that somebody's added. We talk about uh, related projects. So the BBC Social Media Summit is going on right at the moment, or any day. Yeah, it's very exciting. Um, and uh, another educational one, yeah. That, that's just teaching people how to use pool a bit. Um, we also have a projects page. Um, I think I bookmarked these, so I might just show you the bookmark version if I did, yeah. So that project is Abandoned Australia. Again, that's come up just since I've been traveling. But I can see what's happened is that one of our members, Roscoe, has created this project called Abandoned Australia. And he's, he's putting up photos and inviting other people to put up photos of lost places around Sydney, around Australia. And uh, so already in that, I start to see that that could be a place where feature makers could find uh, new subject matter. Um, that one, or I saw this project too that was put up last night. This person is uh, taking images of clouds. So here, uh, all this text is his call out. It's a little bit messy. He hasn't um, done it as neatly as he might have, but um, he's given you some resources where you can go look at clouds. He's described the fact that he wants people to put cloud photos up, and he, you can see a couple that he's put up and already. Yeah, I can't see who's done those yet, but. Um, so again, a lot of people will be contributing to this group. You can see where they come from. This is a new one, so there's not many right now, but let's see, um, see if I can show you an example. So here we've, we've already got a few from this region over in the west of Australia. I'll click on one and then you get a, a picture you get a picture of that and you can go straight to that person's work if you want. Um, so, uh, you know, again, I could hear a feature in there, like people who take images of clouds or something. Um, we also have the people page, and that's where we feature people. And I won't elaborate too much there, just a lot of interesting people working in pool. Um, I'll quickly show you, everybody has their own space, so I'm logged in as myself, so I'll go to my pool. And there I have a lot of my features uploaded. I can also see my favorite things. I've, I've, I've nominated favorites along the way. I can look at my projects. I can look at people I'm interested in and so on. That I'll just nominate is another way that people could use Pool. I could imagine particularly maybe for an emerging uh, program maker or a freelancer, it could be a good place just to put your work. And uh, it's just like your portfolio. It's like a free online space. And um, sure, you could do that in a lot of spaces. But I think the safety of a public broadcaster, it's a very, it's a very nice space. And it's around uh, the broadcast medium. So you could just put your stuff there. And every time you want somebody to listen to it, uh, invite them to go to this URL. Um, I'm going to go back to the slideshow now.
And this same um, group who did this design, they were a research group, so they were also rev doing a review, a research project around Pool, and one of the things that they came up with as a conclusion is that Pool will uncover and explore challenges that will be relevant to the whole media industry. Um, and what are those challenges? I um, can think of a few, but for example, one is I just think the changing role of, of public service media in, um, in an era, I'm not sure about the context of everyone's country, but I think that there's a greater expectation in Australia and in many places in the world um, of digital citizenship, uh, of um, that a public broadcaster has some role in creating digital citizenship, um, of diversity of voice. This allows a lot of diversity of voice pool. Another uh, challenge that it, it explores, and I'm not saying it's the answer or providing any answers, I really do think of it as an explore, exploration vehicle, whose time will come and go. You know, it maybe has another year or two, maybe we'll find out what we need and then we discontinue it. Um, but another one is new content production models. So one way to think about Pool is that it's a, it's a platform, it's a framework, meaning a set of, a set of ideas, um, and a platform, some tools and some resources, combined with some ABC expertise, which gets thrown in the mix, for doing co-creation projects. And that's creating between different community members or also creating between ABC producers and their audiences or producers like you. So I just wonder if anybody has any questions before I go on. Yeah? What do you mean that you can upload all your stuff, you mean all your, your yep. limited? Yeah, yeah. Um, well, we've, with the new site, we've got some file size limits, okay. but we don't have an overall limit on space. But it's a, it's a pretty interesting issue that we're having to start to grapple with as we grow. Obviously, we can't be an archive for everyone's work forever, so we're starting to develop some interesting policies and trying to do them in that same participatory way where people decide. But it, it will basically probably be around how active the work is. If something's been sitting there for years and untouched, it's probably going to end up disappearing, but politely talking to the author first. But yeah, not much limitation at the moment. Any other questions? I'm happy to move on if there aren't. I was just wondering, is, is anyone free to use what they find in pool? Absolutely. There's no rates? Um, no, there's no rates. Most of what's here, and I'll talk about this a little later, is under a Creative Commons license, and it determines how you can use it. And it's an essential tool within pool. But yeah, you're free to use the tool, and you're free to use most of the media. What? The website yeah. to build it, yeah. eighty. I'm sorry, I can't see you, but about eighty thousand Australian dollars. What is that? I don't know. Do you know, Nicole? <laughs> it's. Uh, it would be less, less euros. Maybe sixty thousand. I don't know. Fifty. Um, we have. We have the equivalent of two full-time staff, including myself. It's actually broken up into one two-day-a-week person, one, one and a half. Got a lot of interns, too. A lot of young people are very interested to work on it, and we, we uh, work with them. And we learn as much from them as they do from us. It's a great place for exchange. What is ABC expecting from you? <laughs> from me or the project? From the project and from your core staff. Right. I think that they are expecting, it depends on who you ask, Leah, some of the managers would be looking for, they're desperately, you know, trying to keep up. How do we, how do we maintain our place in the media landscape in the digital age? They would love it if we're getting lots of numbers. W that's not really what I think we're about. And other managers who I think are a little more enlightened are interested in what we can learn from this space. Just a learning exercise. It's not so expensive to staff and 50 grand, it's not such a major investment for them. So I think that th I think that they feel it's okay just to do some projects in it, find out what we find out. Do you use a lot of ideas on the radio as well? Or is it just it just stays on the music? No, we do. We, we we go we go to the radio and I'll I'll move there. Shall I move there rather quickly? I'm starting to be worried about time actually. Yes, I should be worried about time. Okay, I'm going to not speak quickly, but I am going to go more quickly. Um, I may skip some of the videos that I recorded, but I thought rather than me talking about pool, I'd get a few other people to tell you about it. So here's uh, one of our interns. 
As a member of the pool team, I spend a lot of time monitoring what goes on on the site and seeing the different ways people are interacting with one another and with the content that they're producing. So I get to look at a lot of what's going up and the different relationships as well that are established between people as they collaborate on different uh, pieces of work. Pool is a space where people can go to get inspired. Um, we have a lot of community members on there interacting with one another and they can go and learn a lot about how different media are being used as well. So an audio producer can go in and learn a lot about video production or photography just by looking at and interacting with the other members and seeing how they have used their chosen medium. I think the most surprising thing I found about Pool is just the, the sheer talent of every single one of our community members. Everyone has something different to offer and a different way of looking at, at maybe an everyday object or an everyday sound that you might ignore but they bring it to life and they bring it with a creative twist as well which they can share with the entire world. Why do I use Pool? I use Pool as a way to get inspired and find a lot of great content as well for say radio broadcasts. The best thing about Pool, uh, I would say, is the intense sense of community and the way everyone is willing to help each other out and give feedback so everyone is constantly improving and constantly learning. And then there's also the, the possibility for broadcast outcomes, so we can have a lot of projects going along alongside uh, ABC radio producers as well, for example, where uh, our community's works can be broadcast nationally around the country. So in order to, to set up a project, what you'd, you'd start with uh, firstly thinking of a great idea, something that could get people interested, get them involved, and get them contributing content to the project space. And then once, once you've done that, it's a pretty simple process of just setting up the project space and thinking of a call out so people know what, know what they're supposed to be doing and can start sharing their great ideas. And then uh, once that's happened and there's a bit of, bit of interest going on, you just got to keep monitoring, keep interacting with the people that are sharing their content on the project space. So when a project producer comes to us with an idea for a project, um, we help nurture that project. We start by helping them establish firstly the call out so they can uh, get interest from our community members. And then once, once that's established, we'll help them build the project space in a way that's going to help encourage and foster all these contributions and then we'll sort of help ma maintain that as the project goes on to try and draw in as many contributions throughout the duration of the project. And the ABC pool team offers ongoing support to project producers throughout the duration of their project from the very start when we set, help set up the project space and then we can direct and uh, our community members to the space and uh, ensure that the call-out is written in a way that will help encourage um, the pool community to contribute their material to the project. So, as Anna says, uh, the team is really there to help project producers do things. I really wanted you to remember that. She said it about four times, so that's great. Um, another way of talking about, about pool and some of summarizing what Anna said is I like the term participatory media and I particularly like it because I also work a uh, little bit in my hobby world in the area of participatory health in particular teaching meditation and I guess the basic idea in participatory health is uh, going from an old medical model not saying there's anything wrong with uh, that that's still required but there's also this this growing idea that each person has genius within themselves and so with meditation uh, for example there's there's ways of um, working with yourself that are that are helping toward your own well-being and I think you know participatory media has the same thing built into it is this idea that within every person there's quite a lot of genius and I feel like Anna said a lot about that um, she observes it daily um, so I'm going to move a little bit quickly past some of these slides. We've got an, a very active community of cultural producers, and those are some of the ways, some of the words that they use on their um, on their profiles. Um, want to talk about people? So Anna's one of the people. Who do we have? We have all these kinds of people and more. And you know whether it's a. 80-year-old woman, um, I'm thinking of Betty Bursky, one of our lovely members, uh, writing beautiful work about aging, or a tram driver taking photos every day of all the places that he passes in Melbourne, or uh, indigenous kids on remote communities uploading their own work to pool and podcasting it, if 
I get time I'll show you some of that. Um, basically the power of the pool platform is that all these diverse people are working together and I think that a lot of innovative things naturally happen when you mix a lot of strange elements together um, and so already I think we've seen new forms of storytelling starting to come out of it. Um, I'll just give you a, an example of one pool person um, very quickly. This is um, Susan Durgham. This is one of Susan's photos, I should say. Susan is, um, when I used the term digital citizenry, um, which is getting used a bit these days, I don't know if you come across it much, but this idea that um, populate, you know, part of the public broadcasting mission might be to enable citizens to tell their own stories or to be um, part of the digital world of communications. Um, I think uh, Susan Durgan is a classic example. She first came to Pool a couple of years ago. She'd been living in uh, Damascus, Syria, and she loved to take photos. So she started uploading her photos to Pool with some encouragement from the team. We were saying, well, why don't you put some descriptions of those photos? And her descriptions turned into, um, into stories. Then before long, she was getting on to us and saying, oh, you know, what if I take a mic out with me? Oh, yeah, that's a great idea, Susan. Um, so um, she was taking some photos. Just, I just downloaded these last night. It looks like there was a protest in Melbourne. Uh, around Syria and um, so Susan um, I got this comment off the website one of her most recent comments so in a way that's a budding feature maker if you like not that she's necessarily aiming to be a feature maker or, or will ever bridge that space. In fact, some of the people, some of our broadcasters have listened to her work. They say her work is not of technical quality yet to be commissioned. And Susan knows that and she's fine with it and she's looking, you know, she's aspiring to get better. But it's not necessarily that people are trying to end up a, as a broadcaster. Um, but I just thought Susan's, Susan's motivations are so much like our own. Um, this is a, a photo, there's a group of kids, in uh, indigenous kids up in remote Arnhem Land. The, I know a few people here have been to Australia and been to Aboriginal communities. Very remote community called Ramanginning up in the Northern Territory. Um, kids up there upload their own uh, stuff in their own language, which is great, and uh, share it with the, the, the broad community. That's an area that's so difficult to get to. We as program makers are lucky if, you know, if we get up there once or twice in our life, most people. Um, but they're just sending us their stuff now. And they podcast it for everyone to hear. No aspiration to be on the radio. It's enough to do this. They also, it's a, I've, I've talked to the teacher who helps them do this, and it's an enormously empowering thing for them to be able to speak in their own language and share their own, uh, their own stories. Um, I've talked about people. We have various roles. I'll just see if I need to skip this, though. Look, I'll go back to this if I if I have time, I think. Um, but I've talked about community members so far. I'm skipping community editors. They're, they're just people who have more privileges within our community because they become uh, leaders within the community. But I'd like to... Uh, I have a video from a community manager. Um, I might give him just a minute. This is our community manager. He, he does similar to what Anna does, but he's at a higher level and uh, more experienced, and he's also a PhD researcher, and he'll tell you a little bit about that. He's doing a research project within Pool. How do I use Pool as a community manager? Well, there's a few different answers to that, and I think the first way to think about it is as a community member. So I'm within this space <laughs> as a creative practitioner and also as a pool member myself, contributing material and interacting with other pool members. Uh, secondly is as a representative of the ABC pool team uh, and that is to uh, work with the community but having the knowledge of the ABC as institution uh, as well. Um, so acting accordingly with the pool community whilst uh, a whilst adhering to the ABC uh, policies and way of working, basically. Uh, and I think there's a third angle as well, and this is uh, really as an interaction person between the pool community and the people who are ABC producers. Uh, and what that entails is, is, entails is understanding the ABC producer and what they're trying to achieve out of running a, a project within ABC Pool and also understanding the ABC Pool members and what they're there to do. Uh, and it's the, the role of the community manager 
to introduce those two stakeholders together uh, and sort of act as a translator between the two because sometimes they speak different languages. So my role is to understand both both uh, stakeholders uh, and allow those two to engage in a, in a conversation where the outcome might be a creative broadcast production. Okay, um, I'm going to, just for time, move move past where he talks about his role as a researcher. Pity, because it's quite interesting, but um, l maybe less relevant here. But I'll just say he, he um, Queensland University of Technology, which is a creative industries uh, university, has made a scholarship for Jonathan to do a PhD in pool because they're interested in learning about this space too. And the research question that he has is written there. As you can imagine, all those different groups coming together particularly the community and the ABC on the other hand, they have different interests. And so he's, what, he, what, he, what he's interested in with his PhD is how do their interests converge and diverge and how are they negotiated? But that's a whole big aspect of pool, but not so relevant to your work. I was going to do questions, but I think I'll just keep moving. Um, one thing that pool is being used for a lot is by educators. So um, I just might let another educator speak to you. But they're tending to run projects in pool. They see it as a great bridge between the student space and the uh, professional space. And this gets us into our fourth role of project producers. So we had the community members, community editors, the community manager, that was Jonathan. And now we have project producers. And this is the space I'm quite interested to talk about because this is the space I could imagine some of you in if you're interested in working here as project producers. Okay. Um, Kyla is a project producer, but she comes from the educational sector. Pool is a social networking and media sharing website uh, which where users can share video, audio, still images or text. Um, most of the people there kind of really seem to identify themselves as producers or, or makers of creative objects. Um, and you can set up a profile and share work and participate in various projects that go on. Uh, one of the things I think that distinguishes the pool a bit is well, A, this emphasis on emerging media producers or, or people who identify themselves as producers and also its relationship to the ABC as part of ABC. And I think because of that it gets a lot of its, the sense of it, it, its culture and its ethos via ABC. Um, I've used Pool uh, both as an in-house and um, contracted uh, online producer and project maker for ABC Radio National, developing projects for uh, 360 and Into the Music and um, other Radio National programs. And I suppose these projects are trying to open up the program to uh, user and participatory content. The idea is really to expand the world, I guess, of the program and to offer users lean forward as well as um, sit back experiences. I've used Pool uh, in a couple of different ways. I've set up projects for programs. Um, as, a, as an avenue for users to be able to contribute materials for like a Radio National program. I've also set up projects that around a particular brief trying to develop a, an exhibition of creative work if you like around a common theme. Um, and I've also set up projects that are specifically for education groups as a way to showcase the work produced by a particular class um, or course and be able to get that work in a in an environment where you know it looks good and it can be um, auditioned by um, executive producers and other um, media you know professional media makers at the moment I'm producing a project called my tribe uh, which is a really large participatory project uh, which was designed to have quite a strong um, university engagement within it and um, so I've brought on about or oh, about nine different university courses who are all going to be working to the same creative brief of community belonging social identity and I'm also working with a number of um, project sponsors which we're calling them uh, like Federation Square um, 
uh, the Night Air Museum Victoria is talking difference project to develop um, creative outcomes for participant work. Um, I also use the pool in my capacity as a lecturer at RMIT um, and I think it's a great space for emerging media producers. It's um, particularly as a transitional space between um, uh, tertiary education and developing a career to help students in that sort of no man's land um, when they're you know working in cafes and wondering what it is that they're doing. Um, it's a space where students can develop a professional identity, um, upload their work, develop a network of peers where they can get support um, for their work and feedback and those sorts of things. Um, and hopefully, you know, it's a space that can support them as they develop into professional media makers. Um, I'll just move on. And uh, this is some, I won't go into detail, but this is some work uh, from her My Tribe group. Um, very interesting. Sorry for the lack of time. Um, I'm going to skip those. Uh, XMP Studios. I was just going to say a few words. It's another educational project. Um, it, it demonstrates how some interesting forms are coming out. It's based on a graphic novel, this project, um, and the characters and the stories in a graphic novel. But the teacher, the lecturer, is asking the students to take that basic graphic novel story and develop some new characters and new storylines. And so many storylines are being developed in pool. And again, it's a great thing that the students are doing, but I could see myself in there looking at that work and maybe using it in some capacity as a broadcast outcome. Um, we do a lot of call-outs from the ABC. So again, in this project producer role, um, you have people like Kyla working in educational institutions, making call-outs to the public, but we do it ourselves. Um, and so our feature makers do it. So here I come uh, to the most relevant person. This is Gretchen, who's a feature maker at ABC, and she's done a number of projects in Pool. I'm Gretchen Miller, and I work at ABC Radio National 360 Documentaries, Features and Documentaries Programme. And you've done a number of projects in Pool now, projects which allow you to collaborate with our audiences to make your features and documentaries. Tell yeah. us about the most recent one. Sure. Birdlands was one which I set up. What I wanted to know about was how people Birdland. respond to the idea of the loss of birds in this country, because each year we get reports which tell us uh, the numbers of birds are diminishing. And I wanted to know how that affected people's kind of heart and soul and sense of identity rather than just their intellectual environmental response. Um, Paul seemed to be the perfect platform to do that on. I've worked on Paul before, and what you get from people, if you prompt them in the right way, is something quite unique, something quite poetic, something often quite deep thought, uh, but you do have to prompt them in the right way to get it. So with Birdland, I asked people what birds meant to them. It was quite a simple question. And to begin with, I got a lot of quite twee images uh, with equally twee, old-fashioned, uh, anthropomorphic kinds of uh, titles to them, you know, making the, making the birds seem like human beings, um, which was not what I wanted. So I was able to get onto Paul and write to people via um, a, a sort of a discussion board and say, look, pictures are great, but uh, your thoughts and your feelings would be better. And gradually people started to contribute more poetry, more text writing, and, uh, and in um, highlighting and encouraging those works through the use of feedback, that then set the snowball rolling for more of similar kinds of work, yeah. So when working with the community, is that a typical process that you need to in a way be in there shaping and cajoling? Hmm. Well I've made, I've, I've worked on a few projects which use pool as a way of gathering some of the material for my documentaries and yes I find the most effective way to get a response is to be incredibly hands-on so it is really time consuming but I think the rewards are worth it I think I think the rewards can be intangible. I mean, you can get fantastic material for your documentary, unexpected material for your documentary, uh, but you also create a whole other uh, 
a whole other work, basically, which is the online existence of the project and this collection of completely unexpected works, which are all gathered in the same place that explore the subject matter. So, so you do end up with a number of outcomes, and one of them is broadcast outcome. But to me, the the other outcomes are the online existence of the project, but also you build up, in fact, a kind of a loyalty to your program to the Paul website but you know and to, and to you I suppose as a program maker which is um, incredibly powerful because Paul has the uh, ability to receive comments um, I've tended to use that to foster and encourage contributors by giving them feedback quite detailed feedback at times um, other times you know it's just to say all right this piece is a good piece, I probably won't use it, but it's a nice piece and I'm going to write one line to say what I liked about it because I think that really um, is a positive thing for the contributor and I think it's a positive thing for other contributors to see that there's that engagement. And often, uh, particularly in the early days of Paul, my feedback would then generate other people's responses and desire to give feedback. So it's a way of seeding um, a desire to engage, I suppose. So uh, it has multiple benefits doing that. A and I, I guess when you're thinking about outcomes, you know, you're not just therefore looking at the broadcast, you're looking at the website and the, and the community engagement um, as one of your outcomes. So it's not like, uh, you know, you, you put in two months instead of one month and only come up with a radio program, so what's the point? What you've actually come up with is a community online and a radio program, so, you know, that you get your value for money, if you like, in that way. In terms of engaging the community to help create this work, to co-create a work with you, what works and what doesn't work? Okay. Look, I think you have to make it very clear that in the end you are the curator and what you do with their work, I mean, is, is in a way your prerogative. So while you have to be incredibly respectful of the work, often you do have to edit um, the work and sometimes I've edited a piece in half. I'll do that in consultation, but at the same time if I get to the studio I'm with an actor and the actor that is having trouble with a particular way a sentence is being written, we might rework it without consulting. just finished. So some of the things that Gretchen said that I think were important is she talked a lot about how to engage people and there's an art to it, not one that we have a lot of time for today, but that's something that those people like Anna and Jonathan, our pool team, help project producers with. Also mentoring. She talked about mentoring. So there's a, there's a kind of an expectation that there's a bit of give back from the ABC. So Gretchen gets on and when people contribute things she comments and she helps them increase their skills. As I mentioned people like Susan, the woman who's doing the photos from Damascus, has really uh, benefited from that kind of interaction with an ABC person. And curating. So Gretchen is keeping control of the work and she's choosing what she wants to use on air and what will stay in the online community and that's a great thing about it you don't have to use everything on air you've got this other outcome which is also an important outcome um, Nicole Steinke did one of the very first projects ever in pool so could I it was the first. yeah it was in fact it was the first could you talk about that and why you did it and what you got out of it we we had a program at the time which has since been next called street stories and we, were, we had w witnessed the axing of other programs. We were interested in our survival, the development of new audiences, the development of younger audiences, because Radio National's audience, I don't know about the rest of you, but our audience is getting old. And we realized that the multimedia world was a possible way of bringing people in. And at this time, it was a few years ago, there were so many dreams about what online could do for us. So we had the program called Street Stories. We decided to create a pro project called My Street. So people were asked the very simple question, tell us the story of your street. Because what we thought would probably work, and Sherry tells me it's true, is that the tighter the focus of, of your question, the, the better the quality of the responses. And we were hoping for all sorts of things. Aside from the dream of new audiences, we were hoping that we would get wonderful material from people in communities about their lives and that we could make programs based on this. 
And actually we did. I think we made the end four programs. It's true that we seeded it with university students' work. So we made the contact with the universities where there were creative students in animation, in sound production, in video production. And they came up with some fantastic, wonderful, unexpected things. And we got some good material out of it. But we also, because they gave us this material, it gave a sense of the possibility of creating audio to people who had never done it before. And that was what was great. When we'd say, if you want to tell the story of your street online, this is the sort of thing. Go ahead, do it. Doesn't matter about the quality. If it's great, you'll get on Radio National. Um, if it's not great, well, you're still on pool, and it's wonderful. Um, so we received more than 100 entries to something called the My Street Project uh, regarding photographs as, you know, a bunch of photographs is just one entry. And um, yeah, it was, it was successful. I must say it was terrifying at the time because everybody <laughs> from Poole went on holidays. <laughs> I have no computer skills. I don't own a computer. So I was there trying to give all these people instructions on how to upload. The system failed utterly. <laughs> and so I had just a disastrous first few days, and I thought, I'm never going to have anything to do with pool again. This was our beta <laughs> website, not the current website. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And I mean, it was the first week. And when people were only employed, some of them one and a half days a week, Sherry was amazing in what she created out of a piece of string and a lot of nerve. And um, yeah, I, I was really happy with what we achieved, the sort of material. We had to give people, though, something that they wanted back. They wanted the mentoring from an ABC producer. They wanted the possibility of being broadcast on the ABC. And, um, and didn't you have a prize as well? Being broadcast on the ABC. Wasn't there a prize <laughs> that the best one would come in and get to make oh, a documentary? Yeah, he, oh, he made a documentary with me, I forgot. <laughs> yeah. And it was a fantastic documentary, um, really good. And uh, let's see, what else? So, well, but one thing I can say, yeah. I think that, you know, that, that the kind of discussion we heard from the EBU masterclass uh, coaches, it's that kind of satisfaction when you get to a certain point too in your career, or not, you know, even a young person could feel exactly the same thing, but of sharing skills with other people is a part of the pleasure of doing this kind of work. But, but a big part of it is having that good question at the start. So tell us the story of your street meant we got offerings from all around the country from really diverse places. At the moment, I'm thinking about doing another project, and at the moment, I only have one word, and that is noise. And it seemed like a good idea at first, and now I'm thinking, but what can the question be? Uh, and I'm hoping, um, if anybody's interested in the workshops, if people have a way of developing that idea of noise, that would be really helpful, <laughs> or coming up with a better idea that would generate wonderful contributions from the community. Thank you. So yes, and I'm, and I'm coming close to the end of, of the talk and of Nicole's talk. Thank you so much. Um, and Nicole was referring to the workshops. What I'd really love to do is just, I know it's late in the day and we're all getting tired, so it'll be good to just move anyway. But for my own purposes, I'd love to see if uh, people find that there's work that they might like to do. And so that's what the little going back into your groups will be, just a, a chance for, Willem tells me, 15 minutes, uh, just to explore whether some ideas c can come out. Um, this is examples of comments Gretchen is giving to the, the people who submitted things. So she's just, when we say mentoring, it's not a huge job. It's just uh, jump online and tell them what you think of their work, give them a little help. Um, and then there's a listener, uh, uh, sorry, a pool user coming back talking to Belle. Belle was one of the contributors. Oh, Belle, I listened to the broadcast. Your stuff is fantastic. And the way the producers worked with it is fantastic too. So everybody's getting uh, some tickets. Oh, there's a name for it. We won't go into it. I really would love to play you a bit of this, the Flickr Man. Mm -mm -mm. Yep, I can do that. Um, this came from a BBC producer or an ex-BBC producer. Again, this, this is open to anybody, anywhere. Um, and... This is more of a radio drama, uh, but, and I think I better m m not say too much about it. Lance Dan, the maker, wanted to write a, a radio drama that relied on people's contributions into the pool. So he came up with this idea that he was, um, that the main character, Cornelius, who's in England, his girlfriend had disappeared, and he had a reason to think she'd gone to Australia, and he needed the pool community to help him find her by uploading photos of 
where they might have seen her. And then he wrote those into the drama. So I'm going to play you the call out that he put on to Poole. It was a particularly sophisticated one. You don't need to be scared by his high level of skills. A simple question will also do, but I like the way Lance did it. Um, and then I really want to play you a bit of the piece to show you how he used it because he took Poole one step further, which I'll explain in a minute. But here's the call out. I may not play the whole thing. It's only about a minute and a half anyway. So this is the character Cornelius speaking on pool. My whole life, I've been a waster. I haven't done anything. I don't mean anything. Like I don't stand for anything. I just haven't had the strength of character to commit to anything. I got Lucinda's message, the video message. I realised that I've got to change now. Lucinda's the girl. To girlfriend. make a difference, to make a stand, to actually do something. I, I can help her. She needs my help. All this time I've been waiting for her to come along, to, to help me, to pick me up and point me in the right direction. She's been crying in that film. She never cries. I know that she's in trouble. She's, she's gone away. But she told me where she's going. Somewhere she always felt safe. She, she always talked about Australia as, as being her sanctuary. I just thought she meant the memory. She, she grew up there, or at least spent part of her life there, but she didn't talk about it much. There was a time when her mother was alive and everything was fine. And we never seemed to talk about those days. She told me that she always felt safe there. I wonder what she meant. And now I know. So do they. They know where I am, and they know where she is. In that case, she needs my help. This is where you come in. I want your help. My story's going out on ABC in Australia, and I want to use that. I want you to look for Lucinda, to help me find her. Look in your old pictures, and in your old videos. Look for a blonde woman. She might be in the background. She might be in the distance. You might, you might not be able to see her face. She could be anywhere. An obscured figure, a, a silhouette, just a, a hand or an arm. The merest glimpse. But if you see her, you'll know her. So just for time, I'll, I'll have to uh, stop, because I'd like to play you some of the finished piece that he made. One thing that I th reason I wanted to play this multi-platform experience, what you'll see from the radio piece is that he constantly sends you back to the pool website to look at the photos that people have uploaded. So he writes, people upload photos, they tell little stories. I think I saw her on the ferry heading to Palm Island. He writes that into the play, and during the play he tells you, now, now go look at the pool website, you'll see the photo that I'm talking about, for example. I've written New Path to Commissioning because it's a new way to find, uh, for networks to find new talent because uh, Lance wasn't known to the ABC, but through this he was commissioned by our radio drama department. Um, but here's uh, just a little seven minute segment, audio segment, uh, with some looking at images. Five minutes, Willem's telling. Cornelius, you got a message? Talents again. I'll deal with it later. No, not this time. No name this time. That's a film. Go on then, start it. He pressed play, and my heart was carried away. Cornelius, I know that one day you're going to see this film, and when you do, your whole life will have changed. It was a message from Lucinda. You'll have been through so much pain and shock, and after everything that has happened, I know you'll blame me, or think that I have done this to you. If you follow Link 4 on the website, you'll see what I saw. Look, what happens tonight, what has happened tonight... Her ruby red lips so close, so real. In this moment, she is alive and with me again. To Josh and I, it's been coming a long time. My breath catches and wells inside me. You're suffering. You're going to suffer for something we So he did put some stuff we on the website himself, so he made this video back. himself. I know that now. I know because Andy is here at the party and because he is one of them. She's at the party. This was recorded at Josh's party, where it all began. He's part of an organisation. They're like a family, and you can't leave them. 
They won't let you leave. In that moment, she knew something awful was about to happen and that she would have to go away. Don't come looking for me. I'm going back to Mum's place. No one can harm me there. Going back to Mum's place? Going back to Australia? This is where she'd grown up, in the years before her mother died. I, I was safe there once. Perhaps I'll be safe there again. The world is darker now, more dangerous, Cornelius. So he's asking That's listeners why while they're listening to the radio thought, drama then to go look at Paul and see this video at you the same time. Me. You never need me. Because you're always there. Always there for me. And I knew in that moment what I had to do. I know you will find me. This was a call to action. I love you. I could make a difference. I could save her and I had the means. I, I could find her. Go to the next link. Number five. Pool. Pool. That's his a website run call by the to Australian action. Broadcasting Corporation. Pool. A user-generated collaborative art site. Pool. A shared experimental creative experience. Pool. A bunch of pictures and text that the public have stuck up online in the desperate hope that someone is paying attention to them. Paul. Paul was to be my tool. I would turn the cameras around and I would use them to find Lucinda. You see, ABC National Radio had taken an interest in my story and chose to broadcast it on something they called Airplay, their drama slot. Really, I ask you, like all this is some kind of made-up entertainment constructed purely for your benefit. Anyway, I was going to turn this to my advantage. I was going to use this pool site uh, to put out an appeal to the Australian public, an appeal to help find Lucinda. I wanted people to submit any clues they could find, shards of evidence, any sightings of Lucinda. I asked people to check their old photos and, and holiday snaps to, to look for her and upload anything they could find to pool. She could have been anywhere. She was potentially everywhere, and there were millions of people who could help me find her. <laughs> the reality was very different. If you click on the pool link, you're looking at a page of photos, a, a grid of about 40 or 50 set out on a black background. This is just one page of the responses I received. It is a gallery of misinformation, disinformation, rantings, abuse. Nonsense and lies. Day in, day out, the sightings poured in, and day in, day out, the babble would rise. Nothing, and I mean nothing is forever. Lucinda was with another man. She, she was kidnapped. She'd escaped. She was in Sydney. She was in London. She was on an island in a plane, crying, drunk, and in trouble. A can of worms had been opened, and the contents had come wriggling and spilling out. Okay, I'll, I'll have to stop it there um, but it goes on to uh, constantly through the drama send you back to say oh look I think you can see her there that sort of thing and as the character goes through the the twists and turns of this uh, this mystery um, he eventually finds out all the people in pool were lying to him and he writes that in too and so that, that, that becomes the twist in the thing. Anyway, it was a very clever use of pool. You might ask yourself whether people want to listen to radio and you know use a website at the same time but we're often being told that that's how young people, they, I think BBC is doing a lot of stuff with second screens I keep hearing so that you have the main action but you're also having some sort of supplementary device um, so perhaps young people do want to use the web that way. Anyway, um, I'm going to draw this all to a close and what I'd love to do is if you would go off into your groups and just discuss a simple proposition, throw around some ideas, see if there is, uh, if any ideas come up for a kind of project that would work in pool. Of course it's not for every kind of documentary that you might want to make but there might be some issue in your country that you'd like to find out what people's contribution might be to and um, or there might be any, I'll leave it to you. I'd just be very interested to know if any issues arise or any ideas arise. Then you might choose one and just develop it a little bit. Um, how, as a collaborative group, can you imagine that that could be explored on pool? As Nicole said, you need a clear question to ask people. It can't be so wide or you just get pornography. <laughs> it can't be so narrow that only five people are interested in it. You want something in between. So that's a, there's an art in itself, constructing a clear, concise, engaging question. And then I'd love it if the group leaders would come back and just report on, did anything come up? Was anything possible or not? And if so, if so what it was. 
people happy with that? We might be able to do that, yeah, yeah. When we come back, you mean? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and Nicole too? Yeah. <laughs> That's right, yeah. Yeah, no, no, we could definitely, in our little time left, we could talk about the merits of them and what might be pitfalls and benefits. And Nicole, maybe you could do that in your group too, not only suggesting your possibility, but also... Yeah. <laughs>